This is Redefining the Counterculture on Witten Radio. Make sure to check out our website at wittenradio.com. Brad Paisley tweeted that the restrictions were ridiculous and unfair, and he called on the Country Music Association to rescind them. Two hours later, they did walk back the rule, which said that reporters were banned from asking about the Las Vegas shooting or political issues. If they did, they could be booted from the premises. Hey guys, you're listening to another episode of Redefining the Counterculture right here at Wind Radio. Today we've got a special guest for you. We're joined by Brian Simpson, uh, more commonly known as the Whistle and the Bell. Brian, how's it going? It's going well. It's going well. Good to be awesome. with you. <laughs> Happy to be with you as well. Uh, I'm super excited to talk to you a little bit about uh, what you got going on. Um, first of which, I wanted to just ask you, how is your New Year your New Year coming? Did you have a good holiday season? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I um, it was good. But the uh, we did a little um, work. We kind of made the, we got this huge attic and we decided to make build a little room, which seemed like a, build a little room up there, which seemed like a uh, uh, project that uh, wouldn't take quite as uh, much effort as it has seemed to, and it was, uh, I've decided that uh, all those projects are never worth it, and uh, no matter how incredible your help may be at some point, so uh, I'm down on home improvement at the time, but um, otherwise, it was somewhat <laughs> restful, and I wasn't having to do that, so I like the little catch-up window, it seemed like there's like a little window of like... Uh, where I'm sort of cheating life because I'm trying to, you know, I enjoy the, we don't have any kids in my life, so, like, you know, we the 26th to, like, the 31st or is, like, all this window of time where, um, you know, I feel very, I always feel, like, sort of creatively inspired and all this different things. I guess it's, and, and I feel like everybody else is sitting on their, sitting at home, like, you know, whatever, chasing their kids around or whatever, so, or just uh, resting up. So you always feel like I'm, um, um, yeah, so I wanted to jump ahead and I wanted to just talk about your single, um, yeah. Ode, Ode to Jesus. Um, right. It was, it really, really, really surprised me. Um, I didn't think, cause I'm familiar with your, your work and, um, oh, it, yeah, it was, it was a pleasant, pleasant surprise. Um, it's very thank poignant. You. And, um, I wanted to just ask you, what was the writing process like for the single, um, Tell me oh, I mean, it was actually it was it was relatively relatively pen to paper kind of like pen to paper record kind of situation where like I literally read that story um, last December um, like maybe a day before the show I had here in Nashville and um, I just decided, and I went for some reason just kind of the song kind of kind of came came pretty quick and uh, I actually finished it like literally like backstage like 15 minutes before the show and I just decided like I just told the guys up on the stage I was like hey let's, let's grab the uh, acoustic instruments and try to play this like uh, play it on stage and they said oh no they make, we, we must play this one time with you so we played it backstage one time they were like yeah go let's go for it it's awesome and uh, so I played it crowd really responded to it um, sort of mix of like uh, like Sort of mix of laughter alongside um, uh, confusion, alongside sympathy, alongside of uh, uh, sort of uh, the, the, when we finally get to the to the sort of cover piece of uh, ultralight beam um, sort of rescues the uh, the crowd was like oh, okay okay I feel like on solid ground again but it definitely brought re- got responses and then I I, I I just happened to do it when I was in the middle of having a new record coming out um, in April. And it didn't quite fit in. The label didn't think it quite fit in with the uh, idea of, um, you know, well, the record had already been sort of sent off and everything like that, so it couldn't be part of that. And then it seemed like it would be a confusing thing. So it's it's been strange because it you know, was super topical at the time, and now it's uh, like strangely, um, it, I think it remains at least somewhat interesting. But um, uh, I think people still can recall the story, and I guess 
Um, uh, and, but it certainly certainly is more the, the Kanye West sort of uh, his his difficulties are, are sort of just not they're not really the point of the song anyway. They're sort of more of a platform um, to discuss other things that uh, I'm always kind of wrestling with myself. I'm kind of the uh, um, in the sort of like the, the what the song is discussing. I'm sort of the monster that I hunt a lot of times. Um, certainly not. Um, so I'm always trying to sort that out in that relationship. And um, and and then honestly, me and another artist had another song that we um, recorded or had written, and uh, we had about an hour left on the session. And I just asked the guys that were playing on the session to um, let's record this song, played it for them, we recorded it, and um, uh, then Matt. Um, who plays with me and whistle the bells and uh, um, an integral part of everything I did musically. He put the string sections together and then luckily Eddie, uh, we threw Phoebe on it, the singer, and uh, she did some cool parts and then my buddy Eddie Spear engineered it and there you go. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I love it. Um, on the topic of, um, you know, you touched a little bit about, you know, being a monster. Do, would you Would you say that you found that in order – that it's impossible to be, I guess, a good person without having some sort of flaws. Oh yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I don't know good people or bad people. I just know people, I guess. Um, and and all of us, you know, some of us just have been able to. Some of us, and some of others have uh, just been able to uh, sort of uh, do it. Have have sort of uh, somehow been able to keep their uh, their stuff out of the public spotlight, you know what I mean? And, um, Absolutely. Uh, better than others. And, and, and maybe by no, um, by, maybe by no discipline of their own, because it just happened to be that, that just happened to be the case. So um, I think it's always like a, you put, I mean, there's an open, I think obviously the song is discussing celebrity and, and the audience that watches it and all these different things, but um, I think all of us, if we had our stuff sort of flashed up on the, the big screen of life in front of people, um, we definitely like there'd be parts of it that we'd want to hide our eyes if we were in the theater. Absolutely, absolutely, I agree. I agree completely. Um, it is, you know, like you said, some of us, you know, we're just better at hiding it, you know, and a lot of people just don't know, you know, they're not aware of, <clears throat> excuse me, you know, our shortcomings and our faults, but. Uh, I like how you yeah. said that, you know, it's, we're just people, you know what I mean? And that's, I guess, the yeah, problem yeah, yeah. Have, you know? <laughs> it seems to be, there seems to be, I mean, it doesn't take much of a, it doesn't take much of a, uh, uh, you know, it doesn't take much of someone, it doesn't make much ability to look at, uh, intellectual insight in order to, to take a, take a glance at human history and see that we, we're good at messing things <laughs> up, that's for sure. Um, exactly. there's still a beauty in that, there's still a beautiful part in that somehow, and the, 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 and I love people, and I actually love like um, probably because I you know birds of a third birds of a feather flock together. Like I really love flawed people. Like I have a I think if you my collection of really close parties that you know that I keep close to me, they're all we're all like a sort of strange bunch. Um, but I, I find those people to be interesting. I, I and I definitely you know I'm definitely more at ease with people who, whose demons I can see. You know, um, then I the ones I can't, and then and I'm I've, uh, actually just written another song, um, or just I'm about to record another song next month for another project called People, which just discusses with different kinds of people that want but some of my most nervous. I get the most nervous around people who are like kind of shiny, um, or just you know people that are kind of good at being people. Those people make me the most nervous because it just doesn't seem like there must be. There's there's uh, bones underneath that bed, and uh, it's a matter of time. <laughs> Probably <laughs> at some point, at some point, um, some point they definitely will be exposed. Um, and I think we're we're it's quite a grace to us when they get uh, they get exposed to this side of the sky as opposed to the other. I would guess. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I wanted to touch bases with you and talk a little bit about um, just you know your music. What's the biggest takeaway that you want people to get from your music when they hear it? It's uh, um, a good question. Um, I go back and forth. I mean, honestly, like it's uh, it's not one thing, ever one thing, and then probably from year to year or from 
at the beginning of a record cycle or at, at the end of a record cycle or where you're starting 2018, like what I want people to uh, feel from my music is I want them to, uh, I guess I would say, like as I'm writing songs right now for another record, like I, I'm definitely thinking like how can I help myself understand and, and possibly in doing so like that, that, uh, there's um that you have some you know that there's there's a um uh that we we should share a common sort of empathy for each other um and and in doing so i think that hopefully breeds hope and some you know helps us all help people find that they, they you know um that they're not the only one who feels certainly confused about most things um that um and just, just to hang in there, like, probably, like, uh, I think that's, you know, like, my songs are, you know, I'm just kind of always chasing them down, and, but, um, or they're chasing me, I'm not sure which one, but um, certainly part of that is just, like, um, uh, I hope people come away from music feeling like they heard something that they, they probably couldn't heard anywhere else. <laughs> um, and in doing so, that's my effort always is to try to be as true to myself possible and 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 uh, you know like me trying to do something somebody else's art um or interpret someone else's art so that i could possibly gain a little more uh market share um just is, is which won't be very good I, i'm barely good at being me you know what i mean like i'm barely i'm just getting used to that so um <laughs> so i i hope that you know i think there's something beautiful and um there's a great grace to be found in figure, sorting out, man, like, I am who I am. I can't really do nothing about some of the stuff that I've done and been a part of, and there's hope for me, and there's an opportunity today um, to um, to uh, sort of uh, operate in a better mindset, a better heart set, a better, you know what I mean, like, there's, and, and to sort of sort that out, trying to find out, figure out, figure out some stuff, and, like, um I, I don't know. I just, like I said, it's always to me. It's always like sort of pebbles on the beach. It's like there's a bunch of things I hope people get from my music. Um, but uh, I, I know definitely what I want. I mean, the, the, part of the question I ask more than anything is, what do I want to get from my music? And certainly, that is, uh, I don't want to uh, continue to have an opportunity to share the sound, and the words, and stuff in my head, um, just to get them out as much as anything. You know what I mean? To, to have a chance to move on to the next, uh, and that's, that's to me, there's something that definitely happens for me <laughs> therapeutically when <laughs> when an idea or a sound or whatever comes from go, goes from my head or goes from my heart over the ridges of my tongue and out of my mouth into the world. It changes what the thought was initially, and it really allows me to evaluate and evaluate it to some degree and make sense of it and help me make sense of the world to some degree in doing so. Um, and, uh, yeah, there you go. I love it. I love it. Um, <laughs> tell me, are you, would you, would you say that you're a man of faith? I know that, um, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I, I can't, there's no, um, there's definitely the first, first record in fact is that like, uh, and I mean, honestly, I think, you know, um, I don't think that it's, it's I don't think that excludes many people. Most people have have faith. They have faith in something, um, and um, <laughs> possibly we're all trying to figure out on a mission to figure out what what's the best thing to put all most of our you know put our faith in. You know, what I mean, I certainly sort of dance from from putting my faith in the wrong things and and uh, and just uh, um, certainly certainly as as uh, found over the last seven eight years. Um, some things I find to be, you know, I'm very still find to be more uh, worthy of my faith. I guess. So, yeah, um, I definitely, have, I definitely don't try. I don't necessarily hide it at all. It's the first record is just this entire like sort of narrative of me kind of walking through the first stages of coming to faith as a um, as a Christ follower and as a Christian, um, um, and the fallout from from that. So, yeah. I love it. I love it. I think, you know, <laughs> I think the beautiful thing about faith is, is like, you don't have to be this perfect person to, you know, to believe in 
in God and to, yeah. you know what I mean, to have a, a heart to, to be more. No, I mean, I would just, I would definitely suggest that it's the opposite. I mean, yeah. if, if, if you, if you are perfect, you, you, you're fine. You know, you don't need, you kind of, you're good. You know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, it's a, it's always a, uh, you know, it's, it's one of these sort of, a, uh, three or four or five questions and always, you know, what happens to the innocent person at 10 bucks two or whatever, how does God, you know, whatever, like, uh, what happens to him when he dies if he never hears about certain, whatever, certain, certain things you, you consider, you know, sort of, mm-hmm. uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, facets of your faith or whatever. And I'm like, if he's innocent, then he's good. Um, so <laughs> yeah, if you can find me, find me innocent, perfect people, then, then that would be a, that'll be a, um, I, I would like, uh, hey, I'd like to go live there. Um, it's going to be amazing. And uh, uh, that'd be amazing. I, I just don't find too many. Sometimes at first, I mean, I can, I can, I can get through a couple, maybe an hour or two with you before you figure out, oh, this guy's a, kind of a mess. But, <laughs> but, uh, I'm not very good at, I'm very good at hiding it. And that, I think with every passing day, I'm kind of like, I don't care to hide it anymore either. It's like, uh, it's a lot of work and a lot of trouble. And, um, uh, I'm kind of, uh, I think that's a, you know, some newfound freedom for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I wanted to ask you, you know, kind of transition, um, what, what new things are on the horizon for you this year? I know that, you know, you just released yeah. a single and you've got like yeah. a bunch of irons in the fire. Tell me, tell me what else you have going on. Um, well, there's a lot of, there's sort of a lot of spinning plates, but, um, my goal you know, you start off these, I'm not really big on, I don't make any resolutions, honestly, because I'm usually like three days in saying I'm going to eat better, and by third day I'm like sitting in the stream <laughs> or something like that at midnight, just a broken mess. Um, but, um, so it's best if I don't do that, but definitely um, the goal for, just in my, my my mind is to try to just get out more music um, and, and find ways to get that music out faster and quicker, especially with even like OD Jesus. It's an example of, you know, taking nearly a year to get out to the, um, and I think the, the, um, I'm, I'm trying to find opportunities and different, um, avenues in order to, to, um, create a real like conversation between those who, you know, participate in my music and, and people that probably will in the future, um, like I want that to be a conversation, but the sort of if I communicate through music, then I, you know, can't be responding to the music, and then I respond like to them like a year or two later. You know, that's not a real conversation. That's that's just uh, <laughs> no, it's broken. Not. You know what I mean? So it's like the man. If this is how I'm receiving the work, how I'm responding to it. Let me get it to you as fast as I possibly can. And so you know, just trying to sort all that out and figure out what's the best thing to do. And um, and uh, so I, it, it, there's no shortage of of, uh, of of songs or or music or sounds or whatever that's definitely um uh definitely you know, that's sort of like I, you know I tell my wife it's, you know that's definitely something I'm having to you know I wake up sometimes I'm not being able to sleep because songs or melodies or whatever still floating in my head and it's uh it's incredible to me I, I started writing songs and making music and stuff when I was about uh, around 15 years old. Um, and uh, to not be that old at this point, much older, <laughs> um, it's crazy that it is that has been a. It's still such a fascination to me, and it's honestly more fascinating now than it ever was before. Um, it is definitely a uh, something that so intrigues me and awes me and and, uh, and and the whistle of the belt has provi- certainly provided a window for me to like, um, sort of like operate without barriers, and um, for better or worse, you know what I mean, like. Um, uh, to operate without barriers, and 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 in doing so, like you know, they, they sort of opens up the the whole all the palette of colors, and it's like you know, it makes you feel like there's nothing that I there's no sounds that I can't make or whatever. It's not something where people are gonna fold their arms and go, that's I just that's not you. And I, maybe I'm obstinate or obtuse to the idea that there are people doing that already. You know, that certainly has happened a few times along the way, over, even over two records. But like I think um, I'm thankful that I've seen that seem like people are ready to go on this, ready to go on, you know, whatever ride, 
I decided to sort of operate. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, which I'm pretty thankful for that. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, you've actually um, have uh, written uh, several songs for uh, the country music com- uh, community. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Tim, I think Tim McGraw was one of the people, and even um, oh, I'm drawing a blank. George Strait, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah. Tell me, what is it like for you when you write a song? Um, do you feel when you write a song and it's performed by somebody else, do you feel that you, uh, your thoughts and your emotions and the things that went into writing that song, do you think that they are um, still represented well? Uh, hmm. I mean, not, not that's certainly not to the degree that I would say would be the most um, uh, satisfying. Um, but... Um, it's a whole certainly such a, a, a whole other animal to to write songs for other people. Um, and so, um, uh, try to include a portion of yourself, but also be there's a selfless. Uh, it sounds crazy to say that, but writing commercial music sometimes can be a more can almost be a less it's certainly a less indulgent. It certainly can be a less selfish. Uh, it's more to say that because you're obviously trying to do these kind of issues so that you right. can have a roof above your head. Um, but I, I do definitely see it as a different sort of, I see it as a math problem. I see like writing songs for these other projects I do or for myself or whatever. Like I always see that as like sort of like, um, sort of like this strange, uh, uh, you know, um, like I'm, I'm in a lab and I don't have any idea what's about to come out of this lab. It's just, it's, you know, there's, you know, uh, but but I always see like commercial music more as like this math problem that I'm sort of trying to figure out, um, and and what can be the what can produce the best effects um, possibly, um, so that it it maintains an emotion, it maintains a sincerity, but um, or you, you you don't want to be manipulated. You certainly don't want to hear the writer right behind right. the songs. So I think that's a completely different thing because I'm okay with people when they listen to me hearing my thoughts and hearing me you behind the pen. I'm okay with that to some degree. But obviously if I'm writing for other people, other artists in whatever genre they may be in, like they don't need to hear me. This is a, this is a, you know, um, if you're going to see a, um, you know, whatever kind of movie you're going to see, for the most part, you don't want to hear the screenplay writer. Um, <laughs> what, what you know, they don't want to hear them. You want to, you want to feel the movie. You know what I mean? And right. uh, I'm always trying to sort that out with my own music. Is like, if you hear me and you can hear me operating and thinking and thinking through these songs, can you still feel me? And can you still feel the song, or does it get in the way of it sometimes? So those are things I'm always trying to sort of balance, and I feel like I fall off one side or the other on a regular basis. But commercial music, definitely, I need them to feel. I want, you know, certainly the best way I can honor the artist that I'm writing for or trying to write for, whoever that might be, is to um, let their artist hear their part, for the most part, and, and not let me interrupt that in any way. So it's definitely, it's interesting. And it's, uh, uh, you know, I just like to, I like to wade in all kinds of waters. Um, it certainly sometimes it gets me in trouble. Curiosity is a leaky barrel, as they say. And uh, <laughs> I've, I've, uh, I've definitely had some misspent days doing doing both kinds of things, writing things for myself and writing things for other people. And but I'm trying to listen, trying to listen closer every day, you know, I'm trying to listen to what I'm supposed, what I'm supposed to be doing today. What's the most powerful, beautiful thing I can be involved in? Um, what's the most dangerous thing? You can kind of do the same. Like, what's the most dangerous thing I can kind of possibly be involved in? Um, uh, and because I feel like that's where I tend to have the most inspiration, even though it's sometimes, or you know, the most in- excitement happens in those places. Absolutely, yeah, I agree completely. I agree. <laughs> um, what would you say inspires you, just in terms of you know being uh, an artist and being a creative type? Yeah. Is there any particular thing that inspires you that helps you with like your writing and just? you know, being being a better person, so to speak? Uh, a better, 
uh, I have a I have a few friends that I that I uh, I hang around on a regular basis that are much more honest than me, much more charitable than me, much more generous, much more um, uh, uh, kind with their words, much more funny. Um, and I, I try to spend a lot of time around those people. Um, uh, and uh, try to read. Um, I, I get inspired by reading a lot of those. Um, you know, biographies and things like that of people who have lived a long life. Um, I know, I'm not really a fan of people reading some of the memoirs at 25 or something or even 35, but if you wrote some <laughs> memoirs at 85 or 75 or something like that, when you have this full expanse of your life, you know, it's like, um, I'm interested in reading that because uh, you have a lot more um, evidence. You have a, more evidence to offer and you also have so much more experience. So those things are super inspiring. Um, and, and really, like, kind of jumping in and, and listening to um, other genres, other kinds of music, other things that I don't necessarily like at first, but I, I'm interested in seeing, figuring out, like, something's going on here. And uh, and then once I get into it, I always find it's like with anything. It's like, it's like when people say, man, I don't enjoy that genre um, at all. It, it, to me, it's like, really, you heard they'll say, I hate that genre. Like, I hate whatever it may be, rap or or country or whatever, well, have you spent much time in either one of them? Because right. there's always, like, there's a lot, yeah, there's a lot of rocks, there's a lot of coal, but there are diamonds within all those, and it's when you find those, like, it's sort of like, you know, that can be super inspiring, and uh, so I do deep, you know, from time to time, I do deep dives into, into um, certain kinds of music or whatever that I'm just not familiar with, and uh, it always produces new sounds, it always produces um, fruit. Absolutely. That's some good advice. Yeah. I mean, you can't, I mean, you definitely can't judge a book by its cover, you know, and it's like, no, yeah. I think a lot of us, you know, we're so guilty of that. You know, it's like we take, you know, one look at a, a, at a genre or a person or a thing and it's like, oh, you know, that's not for me. And, you know, they might right. be this, they yeah. might be that, but it's like, you just never really know. I mean, unless you're willing to get out and investigate, you know, yeah, and, and now, I mean, that's what you mean, you know, it's, 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 to be fair, it's like for most people, they just simply ain't got the time, and so, uh, you know what I mean, it's like, I get it, you don't have time to investigate, but maybe don't be so, maybe we shouldn't paint with such a broad brush on some of the stuff that we sort of uh, make sweeping statements in order to sound opinionated, because there's certainly one thing I know about humans, for the most part, and about 99% of us, just because we don't have information does not mean we won't supply it. Um, you know, just because we, you know, they, they, there's a, um, we fill in the spaces where we don't have answers. Um, we, even if having no knowledge, having no evidence whether they're true or not, we just sort of make, you know, we make straw man characters of people and um, sort of allow, like, these bits and pieces of them to sort of fill out, fill them out, you know, sort of F-I-L-L, fill them out like, when I don't really know. You know, I don't really know about that. Really, I shouldn't speak on that. We should try to speak on, get around people who have spent a lot more time in certain situations and speak less on things that we don't have any kind of, like, real history about. Or, or sorry, you know, have any real experience with. Right, right. I think it would solve a lot of, it might solve at least a few more of our problems, especially in this country. Like, if we could just lead with sympathy in situations where we haven't experienced it. Um, if I have an experience with someone's going through at all, and he says that that's the way, it's, that's the way it feels to be him, and that's what he has experienced, for me to uh, sort of brush that away, um, it would, you know, uh, immediately or even quick, you know, with any, with any, with any kind of expediency, it seems like a, seems dumb. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it seems like I should leave with, you know, like, I don't know about that, so I'm sorry you're having to go through I don't know what that is. I know these things to be true. You know what I mean? That doesn't change the way things are. I have a few things I know to be true um, that I feel like seem to line up with, you know, the uh, history of the planet, line up with the things I've experienced, things like that. I know this to be somewhat true, but, but outside of these, these very things, it's like... Um, I need, I'm willing to learn, and if you show me something that would knock, you know, that sort of knock that thing from its pedestal, then I have to consider that, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree. 
Yeah. I think, yeah, you hit on some, some really good things there. I mean, th- I mean, those are life takeaways that people can really take and apply to themselves. And you know, I yeah. Think- well, that, that that's my problem, Walter. My problem is, and my wife would tell you this, is that I'm really good at like, I'm decent talking about stuff and having thoughts about stuff. The application of tech thoughts into my real life, that's where the problem is. That's where the hiccup is. <laughs> it's like I did, I, this year I did, was involved in officiating a few marriages. And I'm like, I guess like maybe four, four marriages or something. And literally, I'm always like, I'm really bad at marriage. So I'm like, this is, um, I can help, I can have thoughts about it and I know what, what should be done. Um, but I'm not very good at it. So there's a whole, there's a lot of people that, I, and I would prefer to be that party. I'm just not yet. I'd be, I'd prefer to be in the party. But I don't know how to speak about it really well, but I'm actually really good at doing it. But for the most part, I'm the opposite at this point. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> hey, it happens. It happens. I mean, yeah, I mean, at least you got the heart. To, you know, I mean, it's like you're. You know, it, I think it says a lot when you can admit, you know, your shortcomings, and it's like you're you're constantly working. You know, you're admitting that you're a work in progress. And, I mean, that's yeah. Really- well, that'd be like that. I might as well. I might as well uh, ignore the nose on my face. You know, <laughs> otherwise, there's just really no way to get around it for me. I understand. I understand. Uh, but I think, you know, that's one of the beautiful things about life is, you know, we, we get these chances to, you know, to keep, yeah to keep doing, you know, working at getting better and, and trying to, you know, to be, be the best version of ourselves, you know, and um, yeah. at the end of the day, it's, um, you know, there's only one person that, you know, we really truly have to make sure that, you know, we're good with and. And so yeah, uh, I mean, I mean, we're not gonna we're not gonna be able to sort anything else out until we kind of come to peace, peace with ourselves. So the rest of it's always gonna be, uh, you know, sort of subjective to that, you know, because that's the one thing that we can kind of continue to sort of try to get, you know, get getting cool with who you are is is a, is a um, sort of I guess I'm sure it's it's simply a. Uh, um, it's going to cost me the the length of my life to get to the end of that lesson, but um, you know, maybe every every day, a few more opportunities here and there. Absolutely, absolutely, Brian. I thoroughly enjoyed speaking with you, and I'm all out of questions, but I wanted to open the floor to you if there's anything you'd like to say or what's going on. Uh, no, I just um, you know, just kind of the. I hope that people uh, you know, keep uh, keep aware of the. Trying to, as I'm trying to get more music out and trying to get increase the conversation, people can go check out the the website and things like that. And it'll, you know, whatever. Like, the process of sort of getting the information is <laughs> one of the better things to do. Um, <laughs> and uh, but yeah, no, I mean, I'm I'm, I'm uh, I appreciate getting a chance to talk to you and thanks for the enthusiasm on the song and uh, yeah. It gets me one more thing, you know. I got at least I know a few people that are enthusiastic about the song, so that's that's um that's definitely gonna uh, that's inspiring even as a chat is to uh, have somebody to share your music with. So that's cool. Absolutely, absolutely. And Brian, uh, where can our listening audience um, find out more about you and keep the rest of of your uh, endeavors? Uh, yeah, they can go on the website uh, whistlesinthebells dot com. Um, they, you know, we got all the we got all the things, we got all the spaces, Facebook and Instagram and all that stuff, Twitter, um, at the whistles and the bells, um, or at whistles and bells, I think is what it is. And they find it either either way. Just go to the website; it's all on there. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much, Brian. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Walter. Appreciate it, man. Have a great day. You as well.